Today's video is sponsored by the Modern Frontiersmen. They are a group of independent documentarians dedicated to documenting the then and now of the world. They explore dangerous and forgotten places and seek knowledge everywhere they go. So, if you like urban exploration, history, or adventures, check them out. A link will be in the description below. So, a couple of months ago, I released a video called the Sandy Test. It was about a personality test that, while debated in terms of its credibility, the results were, for the most part, creepily accurate, and overall, it was just a fun video to make. For the majority of the community, it went over well, and most seemed to enjoy it, albeit a bit nervous that the results seemed to call them out in certain ways. And because of that, I figured another version of a personality test would be gladly accepted by the growing community. What you will all be taking soon is called the Rorschach test. But first, a bit of backstory on what it is. The Rorschach test was created by Swiss psychologist Hermann Rorschach. In 1921, he created a series of tests involving using ink blots to study a person's perceptions using psychological interpretations. The test has been used to examine an individual's personality characteristics and emotional functioning. It stems from the idea that everyone has an underlying way of thinking. What person A may see as a problem that could take weeks, if not months, to solve, person B may see it as a minor issue that could be solved in a matter of minutes. The read on it is truly fascinating, and I highly recommend to all of you to check out the sources I used for this video if you're into that kind of thing. The test also utilizes psychometric pareidolia. For those unaware, pareidolia is the process of which our brains perceive objects in front of us. It's how we can make shapes in clouds, or how we may see a face in a window, when in reality it's just fog and well-placed shadows. Take this for example. What many may see as a dead leaf, others may just as likely see a face. Go even further, and some may say the face looks frightened or scared but it simply is just a dead leaf with holes in it that vaguely resemble a face. Another example could be this common cheese grater. Yet, when we see it from a side profile, we can almost instantly make out a face. In fact, a smiling face. Probably happy for doing a great job. And these are just two examples of pareidolia. There are so many common things we see every day where our brains will work that quickly to adjust it to something that we are familiar with. Enough about pareidolia. I could honestly talk about it for hours, but I don't want to get too sidetracked here. Now that you have an idea of what it is, it will hopefully now help you better understand the point behind these inkblock tests. I am not going to go into the credibility of these type of tests as honestly that would turn into an extremely long and drawn out video on debating if this test actually works. Much like my Sandy video, it's just a little bit of fun to have and test on your friends or family. One thing I do need to mention is that the test itself, while criticized heavily in certain aspects, can have the possibility of having no response from the tester. Basically meaning that when you see one of these ink blots, I am going to list off some things that you may see in the ink blot. If you don't see any of those things, it doesn't mean that you failed or anything is wrong with you. It simply means that you perceive objects differently than what most people saw. At least, that is what I gathered from researching this topic. Keep in mind that I am not a psychologist. But, with all of that out of the way, let's begin 
the Rorschach test. Number one, take a look at this picture. Study it. I will give you all a few moments to do so. What do you see? If you see a roast chicken, you may have a few doubts about what you are doing, but overall, you feel very centered and clear about what you need. If you see a screaming cartoon cat, you are a problem solver, and you like for your voice to be heard. You thrive on negotiation and conflict, and you may come off as abrasive sometimes. If you see a faceless woman, a judge, or a person in a wig, you've got no time for patience, you set high standards for yourself and expect others to do the same. If you see a woman who has clubbed her husband to death, you are not interested in a Sunday morning easy kind of love. You want some sparks to fly so you can kiss and make up later. If you see someone's jaws being approached by a pair of forceps, you are all about being true to yourself. And if people don't like it, well, that's their problem. If you see a rocket or a tower, you are a hard worker and highly respected, both professionally and personally. But you may have been told that you need to lighten up a bit in your private life. Number two. If you see a strong man flexing, you are highly capable and competitive. The bar is set high for you, but you are always up for a challenge. If you see a pair of rams butting heads, you are self-disciplined and reliable. You know what you are doing, which inspires clients and colleagues, but you are also a very nervous and stressed person. But don't worry. Only those closest to you can tell. If you see a scorpion, you are very in tune with yourself, but you can be thrown off by small changes in diet or sleep because you are physically very sensitive. If you see a lobster or shrimp, you are romantic, but a little guarded. You are not sure if you want to sacrifice your peace of mind for the unpredictability of a relationship. If you see fallopian tubes, you are at a standstill right now, privately or professionally. Reality often falls short of your expectations, and your achievements don't seem like they're enough. Number three. If you see two figures leaning forward, possibly in prayer, you are a patient and cerebral person. If you care about something, you don't settle for anything less than the best. If you see a racing car or two furry cubs, babies, or devils, you've got a great imagination. You are instinctively metaphorical and can easily see things from others' point of view. If you see a dentist or barber's chair, you are sensitive and generous, and you take things painfully to heart. You are transparent with your feelings and prefer a simple, laid-back environment. If you see a woman lying down with her legs open, you are easily distracted, you crave balance in your life, and you pay very special attention to physical sensations. If you see two dark forces about to invade a figure, you are constantly starting something and leaving it unfinished. Everything for you is a work in progress. 
Number 4 If you see a beetle or scarab, success tends to come naturally to you. You are hardworking and you know how to handle almost any situation. You set plans and follow through with them. If you see a pair of emus facing each other while wearing feather boas, I will admit some of these are extremely specific. You love glamour and the high life. You know all of the hottest spots in town, but you've got a few inner struggles going on. If you see two pairs of hummingbirds with wings beating, you love beautiful things and you are constantly on the move searching for more. If you see sunglasses, a bra, or a beard, you are a bit materialistic. You like to dress up, but you often seek external solutions, a new car or some new clothes, to internal problems. If you see a skeleton or bones, you feel like you are on a merry-go-round, like life is always repeating itself. You are worried that it'll all come to a grinding halt, and you think you need to take more emotional risk. If you see a flying figure, an alien, or a bikini-wearing woman. You are highly dependable in a crunch, but you can also be flighty on a day-to-day -day basis. You like getting in touch with your friends that you haven't talked to for a while. Number 5 If you see springtime pansies or a bird of paradise, you are charming and thoughtful, but you are slightly modest. You love discussions and generally like people and what you can learn from them. If you see pressed flowers, you were the object of a lot of attention as a child, and you may have an overly high expectation of yourself. If you see a moth, butterfly, or dragonfly, you are a very independent person. You are drawn to the limelight, but you know it comes at a cost. You also cannot stand being told what to do. If you see a pair of eyes shrouded in darkness, you live your life inside of your own head, and you think things over exhaustively. So, how did you all do? For my results, they, for the most part, were very accurate, which is truly why I thought this test would be just as good as the Sandy one. But how did you do? Were the results accurate, or were they completely off? I know this test was a bit on the weird side, but like I said, I kind of figured it would be a bit of fun for everybody. That, and this is now my third video in one week, so I'm kind of tired. Keep in mind that the original test and this test are not the same thing, but ever since the test was created, it has been adapted by numerous different psychologists, with different ink blots added to see different outcomes for people. The entire thing is fascinating to me, and I hope that all of you enjoyed this little test as well. Let me know what all of you thought about it in the comments below, and I hope that you have enjoyed getting three videos in one week. Special thanks to all of my patrons, especially my top tier patrons. KCD, Jace, A Dumb Thought, Blake, Boop, Jason Fontella, Lena, OOD Hamhord, Robert Rep, Ryan93, Espeve, Sir Tony, and Skelly. I will see all of you next Saturday for another video. But until then, remember to stay safe out there, friends. Good night.